Hey, what is going on guys? Talk Nero City here, back for another video. I hope you guys are doing fantastically well. Um, back for a breakfast with TNC today, but it's a difference. It really is a difference. Um, I've recently hit 10,000 subscribers. I've been thinking, what do I want to do for, for 10,000 subscribers? And I wanted to do a breakfast with TNC, but I wanted to do it differently. So I reached out to someone who's been very good to me in recent times and said, would you like to come on a breakfast with TNC? Um, and basically he said yes. He invited me around his house, so I'm about to head there. I need to go to Tesco's on the way to get some breakfast stuff. Um, I'm not gonna tell you who it is just yet. All I'm saying is, he's a Norwich fan, he's on TV. You've probably already seen from the title, but I wanna kind of keep the suspense. Um, <laughs> this should be interesting. Let's do this. All right, so I've just arrived at Tesco's, as you can see, to get some breakfast stuff for me and um, the guest this morning. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for some pastries and some fruit. Mix between healthy and not healthy. Let's see what I got. Punnet of raspberries. Punnet of raspberries and a pack of pastries. That was quick. Do of course have two bottles of orange juice as well, but I already had that, so no need to buy more of that. Let's go to the mystery guests. Okay, so I've been teasing for the whole of the video. Today's guest is Jake Humphrey. Jake, how morning. you doing, mate? Morning. Now I know it's not exactly breakfast time, mm -hmm. but I do have some snacks. You made far off. Ten yeah. o'clock. Yeah, it's fairly early. We've got some. We've got some coffee. So thanks for making that. I have got some snacks as well. Good. Now what? Before, what do you normally have for breakfast? Uh, fruit and yogurt, croissants. Oh, I tell you what, I think I've got it on, nail on the head. We so got we've got. Roll. I'll eat your sausage roll. I've got some pastries. Oh, nice. So I've got some of them, and because I know you're quite healthy. Yes. I've got pineapple raspberries as well. Good Chuck that on there. My little three-year-old. Oh, and I tell you what, as well. He would eat these whole thing. Little, really? Yeah. Little Sebastian would eat that lot. She got little OJ as well. <laughs> We're going to share that with. No, I've got another one. <laughs> oh, nice. The YouTube money's rolling in at the moment. Really? We've got two of them. Love that. You do <laughs> well get, for yourself. Let's get into the news. <laughs> right, so lovely little setting for this morning's morning. breakfast with TNC. We've got Jake alongside me, a little 10,000 subscriber special. Pleasure to be here, Jake. Thanks no, for inviting me in. But thank you very much, and congratulations on the 10,000. Thank you. I follow with interest. It. You're yeah. doing really well. So, uh, really yeah, appreciate great. it. So, news today. We normally go through the news, have a bit of grub, have a little coffee. We've yeah. got all that here. Let's talk about last night's game. Yeah. Wigan, 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. What, what did you make of it? Um, I, I listened to it on the radio, and it's always interesting, isn't it? Not being able to see the pictures for real. You sort of have to make up in your head what's gone on. And I think that... Um, Am I offering your pastries to you? Is that right? Yeah, go for it. Um, you go first. I'm a, I'm a cinnamon swell kind of man. Right. Go for that. I go for the um, the custard. Yeah, nice. Uh, so uh, I, th I think last night is a good example of how difficult this league can be. You know, we all expected after what you know three wins on the spin that we would go there, yeah. overturn Wigan, lovely. I think you have to look at this positively, though. I think that's a game that maybe a few weeks ago we perhaps would have lost. I think it shows a bit of fight and real desire from the guys. As I say. I'm taking this from what I heard on the radio. Yeah. I, you know, I saw the goals and, and listened to the commentary and with the excellent Chris Gorham. Um, I think that you just have to look at four points away from home in a week mm. and know that we are not going to make the top two. We're probably not even going to make the top four. Yeah. It's, I think it's the top five because it's all about one of those teams that looks like they're running away with it, collapsing. And then I think it's... You know, it's we're fighting for fifth and sixth spot, and that's what we have to focus on. I know you're a positive fan. Let mm. me throw this into the equation. Yeah. The opportunity was there last night to get into the top six. We missed out. Would you say that's a, showing a sign of weakness, maybe, about the team? No, not at all. No. Because you're playing Wigan, who are at home, and okay, it's easy to look at it and go, Wigan aren't very good. We've just bought one of their best players. They're struggling towards the foot of the championship. Mm. And there's no easy game in the championship. What I take as more important is I think previously when we went 2-1 down at Wigan, we may well have lost that game 2-1 yeah. or 3-1. Showing that fight to come back and get the point is what I would focus on there. Of course, it's not perfect. And I'm, I am a positive fan. I'm not saying everything at Norwich City at the moment is perfect and there's nothing that can be improved in that football club. Every football club can do better all the time. And Norwich, are, of course, one of the teams that can. Um, but let's just focus on the fact that we are pushing for promotion a season after getting relegated. 
That doesn't always happen. Is the playoffs still still up for grabs? One hundred percent. Yeah. One, we have to finish in the playoffs. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, I think the season would be considered a failure if we don't finish in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but I think we will. We've got a, we've got the quality in the squad. I think that it was a decent transfer window for us. Um, I think there's a finally bit of belief coming back mm. in, and that's why you know the other day I was having a bit of a moan on Twitter that I just find the negativity really draining and mm. really boring. And you imagine if all the people that are on there, imagine if everyone watched them do their job and at the end of each day gave a critique about their job. Now I know that that's the life of a football team yeah. and a footballer, and that we should all have our opinions of them. That's cool. I'm cool with that. But don't think that by being permanently negative, yeah. it doesn't have an impact. Let's just see what happens if, for the remaining three or four months of this season, we all believe, we all get behind the manager, we all get behind the players, and we see what can happen. Because like I said on there, trust me, it could be so much worse. Yeah, I'm going to get onto that in a moment, actually, yeah. about your tweet, because I think right. some, some expansions needed on that. Yeah. Um, it's fair to say um, not everyone agreed with me. No, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's Twitter for you. Mm -hmm. um, the CEO situation... Yeah. Jez Moxie resigns, yeah. maybe pushed into resignation. What do you yeah. make of that and, and who would be your man to replace him? In terms of who replaces him, I, I just don't know. Okay. I, that is a really difficult job to try and fill. Um, I think that it needs to be... I think, the most, I think what's more important than who comes and takes that job is, is how the club deal with that person. Because what I think, and I think even Norwich would admit that in the last few months they haven't necessarily been as good as they should have been at talking to their fans yeah. and keeping their fans across everything that's going on and making us all feel like one big team, which mm. we are. You know, we're an amazing football club with amazing owners and amazing fans. We should all be supporting each other. So regardless of who comes in as the CEO, the most important thing is that that football club sit down with the new chief exec and say, right, what is our seven-year plan? Yeah. Is it to get promoted this season and stay in the Premier League? Is it, like David said, take a couple of years, go up, come back down, go back up, and then establish ourselves. Make this five-year, seven-year, ten-year plan, whatever they think it should be, and then come and tell all of us what it's going to be, and share that plan with yeah. all of us. I'm not talking about sharing the minute details that you can't necessarily tell the fans at home, but you have to tell us <clears throat> enough for us to understand the direction our football club is taking. And then we go on this journey together. Mm. And yes, there will be things that we fail in, and there will be things that we succeed in. I say we as a yep. football club completely fans like us the board of directors the manager the players but then we all know what we're buying into we all know what we're supporting and what we're backing it's fair to say Jez Moxie didn't have the best of times at Norwich City do you think it's a good thing that he's gone? I think it was a re I think it was almost too short a time to judge whether it's a good thing or not because I don't know what Jez would have done in the yeah. long term I think it's a shame that it didn't work out for the football club and a shame that it didn't work out for Jez um because you know, as a football club, we need some stability now. You know, we we've obviously we lost our chairman yeah. on the relegation season. We then lost our chief exec at the end of that season. Another chief exec has now come in as well. Um, I think we need to find the person now that takes us to the long term. And I have to say, credit the football club mm. for and, and Jez for thinking actually this isn't working out for any of us. <laughs> Let's just stop this now yeah, because often you can stay in an unhappy marriage for far too long and it doesn't work for anyone. And that was, you know, I was slightly perplexed, I suppose, by the front page of the newspaper um, when, I'm, when Jez left. I was walking around the supermarket with my kids, and it, it said something like "city in turmoil" or mm. "club in turmoil" or something like that. And I thought, based on what? Based on the fact that we've on a really good run of form. Based on the fact the fans seem to have come back on side with the manager and the players a bit more. Based on the fact that we're pushing for the playoffs. Yeah. Based on the fact that we've actually had what I consider to be a really good transfer window. And based on the fact that everyone's decided that it wasn't necessarily working out for Jez or for the football club, so they've gone their separate ways. Well, how is that a turmoil? How is that a crisis? Yeah. I don't think there is one. I think that you know Norwich City are often accused of plodding along, aren't they? Mm. Well, that didn't happen on this occasion. For whatever reason, it wasn't working, and for whatever reason, it got resolved, and Jez Jez resigned, and 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 you know, obviously, it was the right thing for everyone. So that's not bad news. I think that Jez did really well for us during the transfer window because mm. the other criticism that gets levelled at the club is we never get any money for our players. Well, I think uh, it's a shame to see Robbie Brady go. He's one of our best players, if not our most talented player after Wes. Well, brilliant amount of money. Yeah. We can invest that. You know, Olsen, how smart to put him on that 18-month contract so we got a transfer fee for him rather mm. than let him leave the football club for nothing. All of this stuff is good. and I just think far too often we've just focused on the negative. And look, I'm not representing Norwich I'm not in with Norwich I'm not 
smashing the bandwagon yeah. on behalf of the football club. This is my own opinion, and I spend all my time at football grounds with football players, with football people, and I see it so much mm. worse so often than the way we have it in Norwich. And I just think some perspective and some understanding of how good it can be is really important. That's, that links really nicely, actually, to your tweet um, a few days ago. You basically said something along the lines of a reality check for yeah. both fans yeah. and local journalists mm. is needed, and we're some of the luckiest fans in the country. Yeah. Any sort of expansion on mm. that from the yeah, 140 characters mm. that you tweeted at? For a start, it was unbelievable everyone coming back to me. Yeah. Saying that Did you expect it though? Because it's fair to say that we have had a, a fairly a fairly torrid so. three or four months. Of course. Look, I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend that as a Norwich City fan, I think the last 18 months has been good. Yeah. I think the last 18 months has been poor. You know, it was a fail to get relegated mm. and it will be a fail again if we don't make the playoffs. Um as Jez said, didn't he, at that recent AGM, promotion, promotion, yeah. promotion, that has to be the aim of this football club. And it is horrible to get relegated. And it is horrible not to be where we want to be. But that happens. Yeah. Clubs get relegated. You know, um, What I would say, and the, the way I would expand on that, is if you asked most Norwich fans three or four months ago, um, would you like to get rid of the manager? I think a lot of them would have said yes, right? Yeah. You probably are on, you, know, you, have, you take yeah. the pulse of the football fans. There was a period when they would have said, right, get rid of them. Okay, fine. So who's available? If you'd have come and gone, Sam Allardyce, mm. just left the England job, never been relegated, knows his way around football, could do a few good deals for us, he'll sort us out. You'd go, fantastic. Mm. Let's get Sam in. Yeah, lovely. Well, how big has the bounce been at Crystal Palace? And there hasn't really been one. Mm. They've just been thumped 4-0 at the weekend by Sunderland. Yeah. He hasn't done what I expected him to do by any stretch of the imagination. But I reckon a lot of Norwich fans would have gone, yeah, let's get him in. Yeah. Let's take another example. Steve Bruce, great former Norwich player, knows this division inside out. He's out of work. Let's go and get him now mm. while he's available. Well, he's gone to Aston Villa. He's spent loads of money at Aston Villa. Where's the bounce? Where's the turnaround? What are they doing that we're suddenly mm. not doing? A lot of fans wanted Paul Lambert back. Well, they did well against Liverpool. But I think when Wolves came to Norwich, I didn't look at that Paul Lambert team and think, wow, Imagine having a manager making us play like that. Yeah. I didn't think that. You know, there's so many factors at play here. And it might be that eventually it's decided Neil Adams isn't the right guy for the job. And it might be that someone else comes in and does brilliantly. I'm not saying no manager can do a better job than uh, Alex Neil. Not yeah. the answer, Alex Neil. But um, I just think you've got to be so careful about always wanting change and always wanting to move things yeah. on. Um, and, th- and then that sort of brought me to my second point, which was like the ownership of the football club. Yeah. And often I see people go, well, you know, the time has come for Delia and Michael to move on. Well, if you ask Portsmouth fans, they would have been excited mm. about the Gadamac money coming in. <laughs> Boom, where did that go? If you ask Aston, Aston Villa fans, they were happy to get rid of Randy Lerner. I don't blame them. You know, the, the guy clearly no longer really wanted to invest in the football club. So they bought in Tony Tia. Well, he's spending loads of money. And what good is that doing for them? They're lower than us in, in the championship. So has that made a big difference to them? If you don't run yourselves properly, you could end up like QPR. You know, what was the story in the paper a couple of years ago? Their wages would double their turnover. Mm. Look at the massive debts that Bolton had. Look at the struggles that Coventry have got. Mm. Look at what's going on at Forest. Look at what's going on at Leeds. There are, there are 92 football league clubs in this country. And at the moment, in that list, we are sitting 27th. Yeah. That, of course, we'd all love to be in the Premier League. Of course, we'd all love to be in the playoffs. But let's just keep some perspective here. There are a hell of a lot more teams below us mm. than above us. And I just think it's so easy to think, get a new manager in, get some new owners in, everything will be rosy. Yeah. Well, it won't, because you tell me which multi-millionaire wants to come and buy Norwich, put loads of their money in without taking their money back, and is a fan of the club, and understands the fans, and understands the city. You know, under Delia's tenure, she saved the club, the last few seasons, it's been a bit of a yo-yo, but regularly we've had Premier League football. You know, for a club with the fan base the size of ours, out on a limb where we all live here in beautiful mm. Norfolk, you know, we have no divine right to be a guaranteed Premier League side. The fact that we're pushing to be in the Premier League, I think, is fantastic. Um, and I, I just think there needs to be far more appreciation of what Delia and Michael mm. and the board have done for the football club rather than every time we go on a run of three or four bad results, suddenly think you need to change things top to bottom. As I say, it could be better. Yeah. But, but d- please don't think that we are hard done by 
as football fans because it can be so, so much worse. And interestingly, I had loads of Norwich fans coming at me saying, you don't know what you're talking about. You're banging the drum for Norwich. You've got no idea. And I had loads of fans of Leeds and Forest mm. I saw and an Coventry well. and even Ipswich yeah. coming to me saying, God, I wish our club was run like your club is run. Mm. But I think the key thing from now on, the football club, just have to speak to the fans more. Yeah. You have to explain what's going and on. I think that's starting yeah. as well. Yeah, I think so. You know, but tell us how much money there is to spend on transfers. Tell us who you, you know, which positions you want to yeah. strengthen. Tell us what plans there are for expansion of the, the um, training ground yeah. or the ground over the next sort of four or five years. You know, explain to us the difficulties of a transfer window. Mm. You know, because we're all sensible people. We all understand the way football works. We all know it's not too easy to run a football club. But we all want to know about that. We all want to feel like we're part yeah. of the journey and part of the story. I think that's the thing. And let's finally end on, I think, a fairly positive subject, the transfer window. Ooh. We've sort of briefly touched on it, bringing in nearly £20 million pounds with Canos, yeah. Olsen and Brady. That's not too bad at all. Bringing in Mitchell Dykes, who scored last night, had yeah. a fantastic day. Yeah. And also Yannick Wildschut, mm. who um, I, I think I've learned the pronunciation now. Basically well done. Give us it again. Over Wildschut. Nice. Not nice. swearing. Uh, I did start off by swearing when I first said it. Anyway, did you? Dykes is in. Yeah. Wiltshire has had a couple of tough games. Actually, it wasn't yeah. great last night. What do you make of them two players? Dykes looks really classy. Yeah, I like the look of him a lot. And I was worried because obviously you know Olsen left, and I looked at that and I thought, blimey, we don't have a senior left back yeah. at our football club. Um, but you know, I suppose that one of the areas that I perhaps have been a bit critical of Norwich over the last couple of years has been um, recruitment. Because yeah. I think recruitment is key at mm. a football club. Especially at a um, club like us as well. Absolutely. And you know, we don't have 100 million quid yeah. just to throw around and see how we go on. You know, we can't afford to do things like buy Sergi Camels and realise that perhaps he isn't what we thought he was. Um, credit the board for you know, yeah. moving him on for, I, don't, I guess, roughly the amount we've paid for him. I don't know whether we've lost some money or what, but that didn't work out. Yeah. Works for everyone that he moves on. But then you see someone, I mean, I think a really good example of us getting it absolutely bang on um, is, well, how do you about Dykes? Mitchell Dykes, yeah. Mitchell Dykes. And I think now you look at both of our fullbacks and you think, hold on, someone has been smart enough to look at both of those mm. guys. Um, and I think Ivo Pinto is an yeah. example of, again, getting it absolutely bang on. And if we can go up, if we can keep hold of Dykes, I mean, Dykes and Pinto as our pre- fullbacks. Premier League fullbacks. Feels yeah. like it. You know, they have to be tested properly in that yeah. division. You know, I'd like to see Ivo Pinto... Um, not in a relegation scrap, you know, mm. which he was after he came here. Um, but yeah, I think so. And, you know, Russell Martin's back to his best. John Ruddy has looked amazing yeah. the last couple of games. We've got an embarrassment of riches in midfield. Mm. Um, Oliveira seems to have the golden touch in front of goal. I, I'd like Gus to have bought another striker. Of course I would, because I think if one of those, Oliveira or Jerome, gets injured, I yeah. don't... Uh, you know, is but at the team. same time, if you bring yeah. someone in, they suddenly get a third choice, unless yeah. it's a sort of a ten million pound player. Exactly. So it's a fine balance. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and also it needs to be someone who's happy to come in and be third choice. Yes. Well, if it's the sort of player that's happy to come in and be third choice, do you want them at your football exactly. club? Um, so look, I just think we're in a really good place at the moment, and I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. If we don't make promotion, we can all think again because that will have been two successive seasons yeah. that we've not achieved the aim that we set out to achieve, and that we should achieve. Because we've absolutely got the talent in that football mm. club and then that football team to be, I think, third, I think we've got the third best squad in the division. I think Brighton are playing brilliantly. Mm. I think Newcastle have got a really talented squad. I think we're third best. Yeah. So if we finish seventh or eighth, we have to ask ourselves why. Yeah. But at the moment, just get behind the lads. You know, Newcastle at home in a few days' time should be jumping. And let's just see what we can achieve together. You know, because... I absolutely bloody love this football club. I know you do as well. Mm. Um, and I, I just think so much more can be achieved with positivity than negativity. Yeah. There we go. Breakfast with TNC. A massive thank you to, uh, for 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. A big thank you well done. 10, to 000. Jake as well. And also a big thank you to the Acle Bridge Inn who kindly sponsor this I love the Acle Bridge Inn. Inn. Oh, the scampi and chips at the Acle Bridge Inn is something Two else. courses for 10 It's not it? bad, that is it? Get down there. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Once upon a time, a fairy tale.